Good morning. So uh, welcome to the February 12th town hall meeting. Um, I'll jump right in. I don't have a tremendous amount of stuff to cover today, but uh, everything that I have to say I think is, is important. Um, we continue to look really good um, in relationship to the pandemic. You can see since the very start, we have had eight residents test positive, um, eight in independent living, uh, two in healthcare. We don't have anybody currently um, positive on campus, either from a resident or a staff perspective. So we look really clean. Um, and throughout the entire pandemic, we have had 32 staff members test, uh, test positive. Um, and again, we just continue to look really, really good. So thank you for everything that you've been doing. Needless to say, it's important to stay diligent. Um, despite our vaccination clinic, which was really successful, and I'll talk about that in a little bit, uh, the pandemic is not over. Um, so we will continue to do all the precautions because that is the smartest thing to do. Uh, we know how to stay safe. Uh, so follow the guidance, wear your mask at all times. I will continue to do my little demonstration. So using it from the straps on and off, do not touch, make sure it's tight on your face, cover your nose and your chin. Uh, don't touch the exterior of the mask remove it using the straps, as I just said, we're gonna to continue to be socially distanced at six feet or greater. Uh, wash your hands and use the hand sanitizer. Uh, still limiting the number of people on the elevator to less than two, please. Um, and definitely feel comfortable addressing non-compliance. And if you, if you have issues with that, please come to me and I, I will address it. Um, we will continue to, despite the, the vaccination clinic, we will continue to use these guidances going forward. Um, for the protection of those who are not vaccinated and also because of the variants, we don't know how that might impact us. So um, moving on. So the clinic vaccination, very great day. I've heard so many positive comments. Um, I would love to take full credit for that, but I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> Sometimes as, as the leader, you have to just stand out of everybody's way. Uh, so uh, Steve Rothwell and Ira uh, Batiste O'Donnell, uh, coordinated that entire thing with their team and they did an amazing job. Oh, and Megan Curtis, don't want to forget her, did an amazing job. Um, you were all very ready and flexible and we appreciate that. We will be asking it again coming up on February 24th. So the good news is that we really are at 99.71% uh, vaccination adoption. We only have one person resident on campus who uh, is choosing not to get vaccinated. Everyone else is choosing. There was only uh, four people, five people that were unable to be vaccinated that day, and we have taken care of three of those. So I think it's all handled, and we are working on the other two. Um, staff adoption, not as great as I would like, um, and I will talk a little bit about that. I had anticipated us uh, getting over 70%, uh, but as the day ended, uh, it wound up being 65% uh, got vaccinated. We did 595 people on the third. Um, our third clinic is scheduled for Wednesday, February 24th. It will run very similar to the clinic on the third. So it'll be the same experience. It'll be on a smaller scale though, even slightly so. Um, I expect us to vaccinate at least 345 people that day. So there will be schedules and details and we will get all that out to you as we get closer. Uh, chances are we will do the same type of process with signing up for times on that day. Um, I do want to let you know that, um, and this is something that I have been wanting to do since the vaccine, before the vaccine was even approved, to be quite honest. It's something that I had intended, and I've decided to go ahead and move forward, and I am going to make the vaccination mandatory as a condition of employment here at Edenwald. I announced that on Tuesday, February 9th. Uh, today, uh, I'm recording this on Thursday and Friday, I will do small group meetings with the staff. Um, not mandating that they come to it, but if they want to talk to me about my feelings about this. Um, I'm a little surprised that more organizations aren't moving in this direction. Uh, and I, I could wait, but I've, I've decided not to do that. I feel very strongly that you have all spoken to us uh, by basically 100% adoption on the vaccination. You have taken all the steps to keep yourself safe and get you to this moment in time. And then you have all been vaccinated because you want your life back. And you, I, I was saying to the resident association yesterday, you, you've, you've uh, what do they say, you've, you've hooked your, your wagon to the Edenwald horse. And 
I have to take the message that I feel you're giving us, which is we need to take actions to give you your life back. And in order to do that, I need the staff to have 100% adoption. And that's what I'm going to move towards. So uh, I'm giving a window of opportunity. I decided to announce it now um, to give people an opportunity to sign up for our third clinic on the 24th. Uh, if, um, if they don't do it by then, I'm giving people till May 31st to comply with the rule, okay? Um, so anyway, so that, that's what I'm doing. Chances are we are gonna lose some staff. I'm hoping I don't wanna lose anybody. This is the right thing to do. The, all the, all, as we all know, all the details regarding this vaccine is it is safe. Um, COVID is not safe. It's a no brainer for me and I just feel we have to move forward. So that's what we're gonna do. And I did discuss it with legal counsel and I'm prepared to, uh, to, to deal with that. Uh, the EEOC says I'm on the right side of this and I'm I'm comfortable with that. So that that's where we're moving. So our plans going forward, I know that's the big question. So everybody's getting vaccinated. How's, how, what are we gonna do? Um, I really feel with 100% adoption among the residents that we can start to move towards opening the campus. So um, I, I plan on doing that. I'm gonna wait uh, until two weeks after the third clinic. So approximately, the week of March 15th, I expect us to open up the campus to visitation. I'm not planning on having people schedule or limit. Um, I, I do think there's, there should be a limit to the, like I don't want 20 of your family members showing up in your apartment. Social distancing is important. We will screen at the front door, people masked, hand sanitizer, limit people getting on the amenity, uh, on the elevators. Uh, they guests will not be allowed to eat in the dining room or go to any of the amenities, but they can come visit you in your apartment. Okay, um, so I expect that to be on or around March 15th that we will open up to that. Um, I also anticipate opening up the amenities to more access. Uh, Leisha and Ryan and I have had some communication about that, so the limitations will stay in place until now. But on March 15th, we will loosen those as well. Um, again, mass, socially distanced, but probably allowing uh, greater access to those amenities and we'll probably get rid of the schedule so we won't be abiding by uh, having to, to go through scheduling. Unfortunately, healthcare and assisted living is going to, we're gonna to continue to follow the regulatory guidance because that's the safest thing to do in those environments just from a, a liability standpoint. Um, so other pandemic items right now we are we did pass through our outbreak status and i'm hoping uh with the vaccinations and what's going on in the community that we will not see an outbreak status here particularly if i require all the staff to get vaccinated so in-person visitation is allowed in healthcare and assisted living um so we are going to be scheduling that though because it's still there's still regulatory requirements that we monitor that in a, in a more intense way um, but that is allowed I'm going to remind all of you, uh, please, if people come to your apartments, uh, mask and socially distance at all times. That's whether it's a delivery or um, uh, somebody coming in to, to clean your apartment or do some maintenance work, or if you're visiting with your neighbors. Okay, uh, the amenities will remain as I as I just said: uh, gym, two people at a time; pool, two in the water, two on deck; salon, one at a time; bus service, six at a time auditorium less than 10 at a time um, but after the 15th we will be adjusting those okay financials looking good i mean we're only 31 days in um revenue is actually under by four hundred and thirty eight thousand dollars you can see uh year to date we're a little over two million to a budget of 2.4 uh, some of that is earned entrance fee income. That's 357,000, but in entrance fees are actually under by 150,000. And then service fees uh, are under, as you can see here on the slide, by 48,359. So, so occupancy is down. So revenue's not, uh, we're not, we're not throw, hitting it out of the park on revenue. Investments were also not great in January, just kind of a flat, um, an actual loss of, of 23,000. So uh, looking good, expenses is where we continue to be really aggressive. As you know, we, we closed uh, Eden Place uh, in order to reduce our expenses. So we look good, we're under by 246,000. Um, so net operating income all in, uh, we're actually 
under by a hundred, uh, lost one hundred seventy thousand dollars for the month, uh, a variance of one hundred ninety because we expected to to make twenty thousand. But when we look at strictly operations, which is what's important to me, which is monthly service fees, which were only under by forty eight thousand, um, expenses uh, were under by three hundred thirty. Basically, we made three hundred thirty nine thousand dollars, three hundred forty thousand dollars off of, of operations. Um, monthly service fees and expenses. So a great month. Uh, we have not seen anything like this ever. Uh, so it's a good way to start our year. Occupancy uh, continues to, 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 to be okay. Uh, we're at 248 IL apartments to an inventory of 273. So we have 25 uh, open apartments, 91% occupant, occupied. Uh, three sales, uh, we expect to move in, I think at the end of the week. Um, so we're occupied and sold to 92%. Southerly continues to be pretty full uh, at 91% occupancy. As we know, Eden Place is closed. Forks, it's 20 of 24 apartments or 83% occupancy. And Stroh uh, is 36 of 49 or 73% occupancy. So uh, overall campus occupancy is at 83%. Um, occupied and sold to 84%. We're doing better than national numbers. And we do have some good sales activity occurring. So I'm, I'm hoping, uh, I don't know that we'll have the year that we would, we would love to have, but I think it'll be okay if right now is any indication. So we have, uh, as I said, three sales. Uh, Frankel coming in, I think, by the 15th uh, until 11.08. Uh, and we have a potential for eight sales. So we're still continuing to be very flexible. I will say we, uh, we will not necessarily require everybody who's moving in to get vaccinated uh, because I think everybody is is willing as you as you have all been willing. So we will coordinate with anybody who's coming in to see that they are vaccinated. OK, um, so that that is going to be part of our process. And I should have said when I was on the other um, on the other slide that we will also you, you will either you will have to agree to be willing to be vaccinated and then get vaccinated in order to be eligible for employment here. So not only am I requiring it of everyone who is here, but any new hires will have to agree to be vaccinated in order to, to apply here. Other initiatives, the Medicare certification. So um, it's it, basically status quo, even though uh, Steve did have a conversation with uh, Maryland Department of Health, uh, and they are going to do a desk review of all of our policies and procedures. So we actually are making some progress. Uh, we don't know when we'll get our certification survey. We still have some staff training that is going to be done. So just a few minor tweaks here and there. Uh, but we will be dropping off all of our policies and procedures so that they can do a desk review of that. That is a big part of the certification. Showing up and sort of walking around and looking at our documentation is another part. Uh, it's possible that we might be able to get all this done off-site um, because there's there's probably no reason we can't get them access to our medical record uh, because it's electronic and have them look at our documentation as well off-site. So, so I'll keep you posted on that, but we are moving it forward. Dining room renovations, the flooring is down. Uh, the divider partition uh, installation should begin on Monday. Uh, tabletops are here and they were going to start putting them together yesterday. I, I noticed it's not uh, underway mostly because of the snow. Everyone's out dealing with that, um, but I expect tables to start to be put together. The chairs were all delivered this morning. I expect the shutters by the end of the month. Our, our intention is to do a soft opening of both of those dining areas uh, in the month of February. So more information will follow on that. We still are waiting for the countertop uh, for the grill uh, to come in. It, it, it's here, they were gonna deliver it on Monday. So it's just putting that in and then just making sure once the wells and everything is in, everything works and, and, and is in good order. Um, we also started the work up in Southerly Place. So that is underway. The fence for the parking lot, you can see it looks great. Um, most of it is done. They still have to come across the, the front. Uh, we expected that in mid-February. It's possible because of the snow that we're looking at the end of February. I uh, continue to get questions about Comcast and our Wi-Fi. That really isn't going anywhere different than, than what I've been reporting. So we did sign the contract with Comcast. The installation is going to occur uh, probably mid-year to fall. Um, and with that, it, we will have Comcast in place as the private cell contract expires, okay? Um, the lineup for that, I've been getting questions on that, is the same lineup 
that we had when we were going to do this before. I do have that available. So if you would like that, just let me know and I will provide that to you. Uh, Privatel, no bigger issues that I'm aware of. Again, if you are having problems, uh, report that to the email EdenwaldTV at Edenwald.org. Okay. Horrex Hall in Eden Place, as you know, um, I've already indicated that we closed Eden Place. Um, we have a strategic planning committee meeting with the board on the 17th, uh, so that's this upcoming Wednesday. We are going to be discussing um, renovating and repositioning that area. My intent is to not reopen Eden Place, uh, to combine it with Horrocks Hall, uh, not necessarily the, all, all of it, but a significant portion of it, and then do a renovation so that we can be very proud and say we have a state-of-the-art residential memory care assisted living with all the bells and whistles that you would see out there uh, you know family style dining and kitchen i would like to put some additional amenities in there possibly a cafe and a fitness center um, i have all sorts of ideas about it i've engaged uh, three different architects to come and take a look and we'll be getting bids on that um, i anticipate the board uh, thinking that this is a good idea, but we, we will see. Um, I will know more on the 17th, but I did want you to know that that, that is something that I think is important and I, I hope to move forward. Um, and we will do upgrades to all those rooms um, so that they mirror more what you see on the independent living side of things. We did some renovations in Horrocks Hall with new flooring, gutted the bathrooms, put, took out tubs, put in showers, used the same uh, gray palette that we're using in the apartments when we renovate them. They, they, all the rooms look beautiful. Um, so that, that's the direction I'm hoping to go. Uh, UV light upgrade to the air handlers. We are, those have been ordered. Uh, we expect those to ship on February 16th and then we'll figure out the installation. Uh, we have UV light in all the healthcare areas already. So it's not necessary to do it. We are going to be adding this as, a, as an additional COVID precaution. Um, well, any type of outbreak precaution, the, the UV light has been proven to uh, clean the air and keep the air handlers clean. Um, so, so we'll be installing those and that will be in all the uh, air handlers that handle all the common space units. Uh, so we won't be doing it in the apartments, but the hallways and, and all the common areas, the dining rooms, the fitness center, the pool, all of that. Okay. The bank, I do not have, I did reach out to Rosedale yesterday. I'm going to do it again today. Uh, I have every reason to believe they are coming, but as I've said before, they've been struggling with the pandemic as well from a staffing perspective, so that has delayed them moving forward. Um, I will keep you posted as I do follow up on that. And that's it. So my next town hall meeting will be March 12th. Uh, this it will be available on in the binder in the library. It will also be available on the RA website and you will be able to see it on our YouTube channel, which I should put that on here, uh, Edenwald Senior Living on YouTube, okay? Thank you so much. Have a great day.